So after my last video in sweet Tuscany in Italy, I got a few requests of people who want me to show my on the road setup that I'm using to produce, mix and master music professionally while I'm in other places. And I thought this would be very interesting for you. So I'm doing exactly that. As you can see, I'm already back in my studio in Berlin. So I'm doing this video after the fact, but I've just unpacked um, everything that I had with me on the road. So it's a perfect timing to actually show you and walk you through what I've used. If you are new to this channel, my name is Philip from Pick Yourself and I've created this to help you build a meaningful life based on your passion for electronic music, whether that's professional or as a hobby. So make sure to subscribe because I'm going to help you as much as I possibly can. Cool, now let's walk you through the equipment. I'm just gonna flip the camera around. So this is the overall setup I've used. Super minimal, super effective and super high quality. These are the things that were important to me. And by the way, me and my family, we've uh, traveled completely by train from Berlin to Tuscany in Italy. So um, we had to keep things to a minimum anyway. So if I've had a car, I'd probably have brought more things. But this is like the sweet minimalist setup that still allows me to produce on a super high quality level and also mix and master professionally for clients from all around the world for releases that come out on labels that get millions of streams sometimes and uh, so there's like no screwing around in terms of quality here. So let me quickly walk you through this and I'm also going to reveal how much you would have to spend to make this setup yeah, helpful for you and to implement this. So the first thing that I've used is obviously the good old MacBook. So this is, um, I got this from a friend who didn't use it at the moment. It's a 13 inch 2019 MacBook Pro. It still has this super unuseful touch strip here, which no one actually uses. <laughs> and um, I would say it does the job, uh, but if I were to go on the road, I would probably, and I couldn't have access to something for free, I would actually get one of those new M1 or M2 MacBook because they are so good in terms of quality. They are so fast and this one, I mean, it was definitely possible to, to produce mix and master with this also professionally, but with the current heat wave um, in Italy, I must say that in some occasions with like 96 kilohertz sessions in a mastering setup with loads of plugins in one chain, it sometimes like actually started to to crack a little bit because yeah, the heat was just too much. And so in terms of efficiency, the new MacBook chips are just much, much better. And I would absolutely recommend getting one of the new ones. Um, these old Intel generations, yeah, they do the job, but they're not optimal. So if you would get this specific model right now on the used market, I think it would be around yeah, 600 to 900 euros, depending on the configuration. So let's, um, let's stick conservatively with like 900 euros, maybe 800. And, um, but that's it. I assume that you already have a DAW that you're using somewhere. So here I've opened Ableton. To be completely transparent, I don't only use Ableton. I use Ableton for producing, sometimes also Bitwig. And um, the thing that I use for mixing is Cubase. And the DAW that I use for mastering is WaveLab. Now there are various reasons why I'm using specific programs for spe specific parts of the process, but that's not the point of this video. Um, it's absolutely sufficient if you have one capable DAW. And with capable, I mean something like <laughs> above GarageBand. So you could spend like 500 euros for whatever DAW you want and you would pretty much get everything on the market. Cool, then um, next super important thing is a super great high quality converter. So converter is just a fancy <laughs> term for audio interface. But since I'm not recording things, I'm just uh, working with everything in the box and I just need a super transparent signal path out of this. This is a mastering converter. It's by RME, which is my personal favorite company for converters. It's called the ADI2 DAC. FS, DAC stands for Digital to, to Analog Conversion. And um, yeah, I've trusted RME since forever. It's like the only interface company that has never disappointed me in whatever setup. And this thing just sounds phenomenal. It's super transparent. Uh, the drivers are amazing. Like it doesn't really matter if also on Windows where some companies have more problems, uh, the RME drivers always work, it's incredible. And this is just one of the best sounding things that I've experienced. Now, um, 
to be honest with you, this is a very expensive one. So around like 1,100 euros currently, if you buy this thing new. And I must say you would definitely get away with something cheaper on the road. So an interface for like 500 euros would definitely be sufficient. And I could also still do professional work with that. But since this has such a nice small footprint and it sounds amazing and I own it anyway, like why didn't, why not bring it on the road? So really was definitely no disadvantage to that. Then let's come to the second most important piece of equipment here after the laptop itself. And that is a pair of headphones that I'm using. So I've used these headphones for like over a year. These are the Odyssey LCDX and they are just phenomenal. Um, once again, obviously a steep price point for the thing itself. I think they're like 1,300 euros currently new. And yeah, originally I didn't think that I would own such expensive headphones at some point, but then if you do this professionally and you want to go on the road, like why would you cheap out on one of the most essential pieces of gear? Now, I must say uh, the masters that come out of my system from these uh, headphones, like yes, I'm literally not missing anything from speakers when I work on them. This is the only pair of headphones that I've tested where this is the case. There are for sure other models where this will be possible, but you definitely have to do a lot of testing and evaluating. And for almost one year without being on the road, I actually mastered things on these headphones and then double checked the quality on the speakers just to make sure that I'm not sending out <laughs> crap to my clients. And then at some point I switched to only working on these, sending stuff out to my clients and waiting for the feedback just to make sure that also in a complete blind test by someone else, like nobody notices any drop of quality. But actually I got much more positive comments and um, even less revision requests and so on and so forth. So I fully started to trust these headphones 100%. There are some differences between those headphones and speakers, especially in the high end. So I've noticed that these are they are so incredibly high resolution in the top end that sometimes if you have really, really nasty sounding symbols, they still sound acceptable on the headphones, whereas on speakers, they start to sound super nasty. This is the only area where I would be a little bit conservative that you don't boost too much top end, for example. But once you figure out this, like yeah, everything else is checked and also the low end is fantastic and then it's not exaggerated, but it's also not too shallow. So. It's just a lot of fun. I'm actually not using Sonarworks or any other correction software on these headphones. There are good reasons not to do this with such a great pair of headphones. You can go to the Odyssey website and read an article about that. Uh, with speakers and cheaper headphones, I would always recommend using something like Sonarworks, which helps you balance out the yeah, frequency response. Now, the not so interesting stuff here, which I will still walk you through. Um, I did not want to go on the road with just the trackpad and the internal keyboard it would be possible, but I just hate working on this. So what I brought is my fancy keyboard and mouse. These are both from Logitech and they're super reliable. To be honest, they, yeah, you can live without them, but if you do it professionally and you have to work for several hours per day on music, then it's just, you're doing yourself a disservice if you leave that stuff out. You obviously don't really need to bring these things on the road. Um, I did because I still had a little bit of space, but this is not like the most important thing. The mouse comes in at, I think, 65 euros and the keyboard at around 80 or 90 euros, depending on where you get it. And then I just have a couple of accessories. So two USB hubs here, because there's like Thunderbolt ins on the MacBook. And yeah, then obviously, dongles that you need for certain plugins. What I've not counted in here is the plugins that are already installed and also the cost of the door itself because I assume that you already have a door that you would bring. Um, let's now look at what this costs overall. So I've made a little list here, I hope you can see it. So we have the MacBook Pro for around 800 euros, the RME for 1,100, the Odyssey for 1,300 and then just a couple of small things. And all in all, the total sum here is like below 3,500 euros. So right now I think in US dollar, um, it's probably a little bit different, but not too much. So somewhere between three and $4,000 is what you would need to spend for this type of super high quality setup. And 
if you think about it, I'm doing this 100% professionally for yeah, most of my day. And still the cost is so incredibly low for this level of quality that I'm getting out of it. I'm actually amazed because if you compare this to a traditional studio where you have super large sets of speakers, you have um, a lot of acoustic installations that you have to do, tons of outboard gear maybe, and so on and so forth, you would spend so much more money, but actually the extra level of quality is questionable that you get for that. So I would send this out as some encouragement to you. I actually think that even if you have just two to three thousand dollars or euros available and you want to put together a new high quality setup, you can actually go very far with that. And um, the most important thing anyway is that you know your system in and out. So if, for example, you have cheaper headphones, but you know them really, really well and you work on them day in and day out, you listen to music to them day in and day out, then you know how everything will translate out there in the world. And so I think um, you can get very far with also a cheaper setup. Yeah, in terms of interfaces, obviously there are a lot of cheaper choices, but I would, I would not go with the very cheapest ones available because there's like actually a lack in transparency and sometimes also the drivers are not so good. But there are decent models um, from RME that are way below what this thing costs. Okay, so. I hope that this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you have any follow-up questions. I'm happy to jump into the comments and leave a reply. And so if you want to get notified with new videos, I'm gonna put out much more this year and the next year. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.